Oh, who's not okay? Me! It's me! Because you're not subscribed! Subscribe! Sorry, that was aggressive. I do apologise. Oh, of course. Uh, sorry, yeah, fair enough. It's him. Subscribe! For, for Hector. Oh, I bet that feels lovely. But whether he will wake up, that's unacceptable. Johns Hopkins, perhaps. Wow. Does Gus actually end up kind of saving him? Because that's so interesting, isn't it? Because obviously he's trying to save him to then kill him on his own terms. But actually, if, I mean, it seems to be where it's going. If he's the one that saves him and makes sure he's, he gets through this and he's okay, survives, at least. Gus brought about his own demise. Isn't this what he deserves? I decide what he deserves. Right, so this doctor knows. Very interesting. He's uh, deep in the trust of Gus. Hello and welcome to Better Call Saul Sunday. That's right, the show that happens on Sunday. Today is going to be Breathe, episode two of season four. Let us see what it holds. Have you got your flamingos? That's right, it's a flamingo check. Let's go. Dude, you're blending at this time. And I made coffee. Yeah! Coffee! You're up early. Oh, did I wake you with the noise? I totally did, didn't I? It's like he's he gives me the impression that he's living on fumes right now. He's kind of going, 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 because if he stops for a moment, everything will catch up. You know, he's energized, energetic, happy, up early, making breakfast, making breakfast for Kim, getting coffee, boom, yeah, let's go. Do you know what I mean? Fast, 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 because he's scared of what will happen if he stops, what he'll have to think about, what he'll have to feel, what he'll have to deal with job interviews lined up i wanted to get an early jump good you, you know you can take some time off can't stop nobody's gonna ding you for not having a steady job right this minute agreed but i don't think he can do that right now why wait yeah i don't want unemployment hanging over my head and we could use another paycheck no excuse i think but that's okay it's grief you're not going to that meeting howard knows how to find me the will was there, is there a will william not that kind of will stop it hey don't be silly it's a serious show Mmm, hello, father, daddy, Papa Nacho, <laughs> crispy Papa, I should have stopped. Todo terminó. This is sad. I mean, I say that at the end of the day, Nacho made the decision at some point to go back in. We don't know what that is, I think. So, but it's sad considering the context and the fact that Nacho did this to save his dad and how hard he tried. ¿Y cuándo va a terminar esto para ti? Mmm. En eso ando trabajando. Good. Comes back to what I was saying last episode, I don't think Gus is going to let him. It's tricky now, now that Gus, I think, knows. Are we doing the balding thing, huh? Interesting that that's uh, something they focused on, actually. Never really thought about it, but I guess I thought maybe it was just something that was going to happen. Not really dwell on it, but I'll leave my thoughts for, you know, if that becomes a thing later down the line, which I assume it's going to, considering that little shot there, how that's perhaps going to impact him. Because, you know, talk all you want about it. Unfortunately, societally, for men losing their hair, it's a big deal. Say all you want, how it shouldn't be, and... I agree it shouldn't be. Nothing to be ashamed of, but we do have it, unfortunately, embedded in our society that a man is lesser if they're losing their hair. Unfortunately. So anyway, anyway put a pin in that and we'll we'll get to it maybe, but... That's a thermal fax. It needed a specially coated paper to get an image off one of those babies. Oh, he's done his research. Oh, I worked in a mail room, so I... Oh, fair enough. No, he did. Talk to a lot of repairmen. <laughs> a lot. They love talking shop. I believe that too, because Jimmy would have been talking to him. That machine was almost too good. What are you looking for, Jimmy? Hummels. Collecting the little things. Yeah, I knew a lady. Same way. Hmm. Oh, you think you have the chops? I'd sure love a crack at it. He's narrating this in the interview. It says here, you were a lawyer. Oh dear, is this going to be a hiccup? What changed? You know why God made snakes before he made lawyers? He needed the practice. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much the only lawyer joke I know, because all the others are true stories. He's rehearsed that bit, I think. But you, you have to. you got to have a good answer. Being a lawyer, my job was sales. Selling the judges, I was selling the jury. Sometimes I was selling the... Yeah, he's right. Every hour of every day, I was convincing. Convincing, yeah. I hear what you're saying. But... I can see why Henry wanted me to meet you. Something's put him off. Thank you very much. You bet. Yeah, we'll see. Mm hmm. I wonder if he senses it too. Knows he needs to do something extra. The time you spend looking for someone is time I could be out there working for you. I know better than anyone that the copier, it's the beating. 
beating heart of any business. Why do I sense an ulterior motive here? He's fighting too hard for this specifically. You know, he stopped and he thought and he walked back in. And then the first thing out of his mouth was, I could be working for you right now. To my mind, I'm like, okay, now he's trying to get money quick for something. Or there's a connection with this company for some reason. He keeps looking around, right? A minute ago, while this guy with the glasses was showing him around, he was kind of a little distracted. Sorry, maybe I'm reading into it too much, but. And that's what we're selling. He's selling him a copy right now. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, for real. Welcome to the team. Beautiful. We'll get you set up with Audrey in HR. Yeah, I think there's more to this. <laughs> so just like that, huh? Why do I sense a con? I just come in and do that little song and dance and I'm in. What's the play, Jimmy? No due diligence. No background check? Um, no, I'm not taking the job. Suckers. I feel sorry for you. Making them feel inferior, isn't he? Power, maybe. He feels very powerless right now. Yeah, and I suppose that's maybe why, right? Chuck died. And maybe, to a certain extent, in Jimmy's mind, Chuck won. Do you know what I mean? This, this, this beast between them, this argument, this, ugh, I mean, that doesn't do it justice, right? This history between them, back and forth of the, and I mean, Chuck got the last word for the most part. That last meeting that they had, Chuck came out on top powerful. Saul was the one who slunk away, tail between his legs, hurt, right? So I imagine Chuck's death not being there anymore. It's that unresolvedness that I was kind of talking about last episode of it all. Maybe, maybe that's what I'm kind of seeing here. And because of that last meeting with Chuck and the fact that he's now gone, died, there's no more opportunity for Jimmy to have a say, to have his reply, have his turn at regaining autonomy in the relationship and, and as a byproduct of that power in that vying between them. Chuck came out on top, died, and so that was the end, right? That was the last thing that could happen. And I feel like perhaps that's where this almost this this inferiority, this need to win, this need to have the last say, to lord it over people, to manipulate them, chew them out, spit them out, and be like, you're the worst. You're worse than me. It's what Chuckler kind of left him with, maybe. I mean, maybe there's something that I don't quite know, but I just, that's how it reads to me. Are you still interviewing for the sales associate position? Mm, it's almost like a kick now, right? I, mean, I could be there in uh, 20 minutes. He wants another one. Wonderful. Well, thank you. This uh, feeling of something lost, right? Obviously, the obvious, right? His brother, but also, like I say, this thing that he's lived with us for so long between the two brothers and which like I say at the end was very much in Chuck's corner and now it's like a little bit of a drug right to to make that whole feel better these are kind of like mini arguments almost against Chuck these guys at this copier company the the ones he's on the phone to a placebo almost these representations almost at least in his mind figuratively for Chuck and he's carrying out argument upon argument fooling them coming out on top winning and it's almost like a like i say a figurative overturning of that last conversation he had he had with chuck that he'll never get now look how high he can go i'm glad we're seeing a little bit more with him and uh, katie i can be there you let her know madrigal yeah meeting five minutes you're on the clock <laughs> yeah lydia yeah very fancy take a seat He's helping you out, Lydia. Remember that, okay? Walls through my warehouse interfere with operations. Why? Lay it on her. It makes for a better cover story. Plus, you had a few things that needed correcting, so consider it a bonus. <laughs> if I asked you to reconsider... I'd ask you to do the same. <laughs> At the moment, you have Gus Fring's respect. I'd want to keep that if I were you. I think Gus will respect this, mate, to be honest with you. Uh, sorry, it's just my reaction whenever I see him. Es estimular esas mismas partes. Yeah, get in there, give it a massage. That's why I'm not a doctor. Cuanto más le hablen, más se activará su cerebro para... What an awkward party. Hablen. <laughs> you speak. Really? <clears throat> okay, no, good. Stepping up, fair play to you, dude. <clears throat> Don Hector. Ah, yeah. Todo está bien allá afuera. All right, fair enough, yeah. Los doctores lo van a mejorar. Oh, bless this guy. Fair play. Mm, we shall see. I feel like he genuinely takes pride in his work, like this work. I can easily meet wherever it's convenient. Really? You're gonna bitch about Mike? I feel like Gus is gonna be on his side, dude. 
what he's doing makes no sense. I feel like Lydia, you don't understand. He is reliable. Yeah, Gus knows. What mess I'm gonna have to clean up. It's not a mess, mate. Then I suggest you give the man a badge. <laughs> they took him for a brain scan. You want me back at the hospital? So interesting. Sorry, I've just realised. That's so beautiful, what the writers have done here, because Gus and Hector is Chuck and Jimmy. Gus is trying everything he can to make sure Hector survives so that he doesn't fall prey to what Jimmy has fallen prey to, right? Oh, that's beautiful. That's perfect. That's so beautiful in its symmetry between the two of them. Everything that I was talking about with Chuck and Jimmy and the way that Chuck has died and it left a lot unresolved between them. The same thing is threatening to happen between Gus and Hector and if Hector dies right now, a lot for Gus, everything that he's done here was because of Hector in large part. He has such beef with Hector and if Hector dies, he doesn't get to get his revenge. His entire motivation for this endeavor is strongly rooted in Hector. That's what that passion, that anger is because, and fear, I think, because it's the fear of landing in a place that someone like Jimmy's in. And you see the result of that with Jimmy. He's lashing out at other people to try and get that resolution that he'll never get. And how painful is that? And I, and I suppose there's something in that grief, right? I, I, I get that, you know, the two situations are different, right? Gus is driven by revenge. Jimmy is driven by unresolved feelings with his brother, right? They are they are different, but they are the same in uh, respect to the devices that they're serving in the show. And it's beautiful as a demonstration, Jimmy, and sh what happened with him and Chuck, as to the fate that awaits Gus of Hector dies and what he's fearful of, what he's trying to avoid. And I think this episode breathed this symmetry between the two of them and the, their stories. One showing the result of, okay, that's how that is if that happens. And the two sides contrasted is so... Such brilliant writing. Yeah, we have been in here, right? Mm. This is the agreement for the transfer of property. And... Bless Howard in those moments, you see he's still struggling. Of course, but it's it's nice that it's translated in the performance, just in little moments like that. It's interesting, isn't it? Because it's like, it's when no one's looking, right? The change between when Rebecca's looking at him and when she looks away is uh, really telling. So, you know, look at this. As long as I did. Yeah. I was actually pleasantly surprised. Normal. Howard, this is, you know, normalcy. Okay, she's looking away. Rebecca looks away, down here. Look at Howard's face in a second. Look at that. He's holding it together. Yeah, he's holding it together. That's beautiful acting, man. Yeah, because it's like, it's that moment where, you know, something has, has happened uh, in your life that's really dire, really upsetting. And when you think you're alone or people aren't looking, suddenly you're alone with it, right? And it hits you and you have to keep it together because that's how you feel all the time. But when people are looking, it's like a stimulus to, to be normal. And when they look away, it hits you all over again and you have to deal with that and try and keep it in. And, and, and that was beautifully represented on, on Howard's face. That panic and upset. It would be the right thing for Jimmy to go through whatever survived and take whatever he wants. The estate can provide a truck and storage for- It's very kind. Jimmy doesn't want any of it. Yeah. He doesn't want it. Thank you. I think she's protecting now, right? She's seeing, she's picking up on some of the stuff that's going on with him and that he's not okay. It's rooted not just in Chuck's death, but what happened between him and Chuck, right? Because I'm not sure that she knows that. She's not had a conversation with Jimmy about that. She is kind of taking leadership here. She's taking uh, the decision out of his hands, but I think the intent behind it is to protect him, to have a clean break, right? Which I get. All that's left is for him to sign this agreement letter. 4,000? Five. It's what you give when you want to cut someone out of a will but not have it contested. Wow. To show the recipient wasn't forgotten. <sighs> Chuck also left a substantial endowment. I like that. I like that Kim's angry because rightly so. Chuck's death doesn't revert everything that he did. It's so wild to me that I have people in my comments talking about how Chuck had a mental condition and so that justified his behavior. I just, to me, his mental condition was the electricity. His actual behavior towards Jimmy wasn't anything to do with that. I think those two things are very different things. You can't use one to explain the other. That's not how those things work. Chuck choosing to manipulate Jimmy, have Howard tell him he couldn't have a job at HHM, even though it was Chuck's decision, not, not Howard's, when he played the supportive brother. That's nothing to do with a condition. That's to do with Chuck and his decision making and his behavior. Do you know what I mean? So it's like Chuck's death, tragic as that was, doesn't erase his behavior. And that's why I say that I'm appreciative of Kim's anger and uh, pointing that out 
out to, I mean, Howard knows, right? But pointing that out to Rebecca, especially considering the last time Rebecca was in the scene and what she said in that meeting straight after, after chicanery and the way that she came at Jimmy and the way that I think the situation was misrepresented to her and Kim, I think, coming in and being like, actually, it's not quite how, what you think. Whether that'll penetrate Rebecca in the way that it should, I don't think so. But I appreciate it from Kim all the same. And also, I think that's a device just to tell us as the audience, we because I didn't know that, but that makes absolute sense. And it's like one final blow from Chuck, even though he's dead, right? Beyond the grave and he's still firing shots at Jimmy. It doesn't end even when he dies. Endowment for a scholarship for deserving youth. I was hoping Jimmy would agree to serve on the board. Really? That's you though, Howard. What did Chuck do? He left the endowment. I was hoping Jimmy would- I was hoping. That's you. And as nice as that is, and considering last episode how that ended, I'm wondering how much guilt is written in that from Howard's perspective as well. Because I think Howard's kind enough to do that. I genuinely do think that. But also I do feel like there's some guilt coming in. But again, sorry, that doesn't make it better. It doesn't unjustify Kim's anger and the way that she's coming at them. Chuck left Jimmy a personal letter. Oh God. His eyes only. Makes me nervous, but maybe it'd be a nice thing. This is the thing. If it's a nice thing at this point, that might make it worse. Because on top of everything else that I said, sorry, I am, I'm speculating at this point, but on top of everything else that I've already said this episode about how it's gone and how Jimmy's feeling considering, right? If then there's a note of kindness from Chuck beyond the grave in this letter to Jimmy, that's almost like, okay, now Chuck's got everything, right? He got the last say. He got to vent his emotions. He got to say bad things to Jimmy that made him feel better in the moment. And then also he got to take the moral high ground and be kind in a letter after his death and settle almost the dispute of the brothers on Chuck's terms. Because it's Chuck, do you know, it, it, it's heavily dependent. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. It's heavily dependent on what's in that letter. I think the implication is this, it's something bad, but I think it would be more interesting and would press this idea that I think they're riding with home harder if it's kind. It'd be crueler. <laughs> As, as weird as that as that sounds, just because of what we've already seen in the episode and, and what the stakes are currently. And I think that would make it worse. Because like I say, all the power for how it's all ended has been in Chuck's hands and now he's died and Jimmy has no more recourse to have his say. If now Chuck is also kind, takes that more high ground and is like, you know, we've had our differences, but I loved you. And do you know what I mean? All that, that, that kind of thing. I can imagine it's that kind of thing because we don't know when he wrote that. He might have written that years ago before all of this happened, right? I, I just feel like that's another blow to this thing already in Jimmy's mind of Chuck got the final say. And he's also, if that's kind, it covers all of the bases, right? And Jimmy, again, is left powerless in that. What were you thinking? Oh? When you came to Jimmy on the day of his brother's funeral and laid that shit on him. That Chuck killed himself? Ooh. What's wrong with you? Ooh. Uh, okay. I don't know if I agree with how Kim's coming at him. Again, I understand it. It's from protectiveness over Jimmy, right? She's seen everything that's going on with Jimmy. He's suffering, you know, something's wrong. She she can see that, she's not stupid. And to her mind, Jimmy was dealing with something heavy already and then Howard put something else on him. At the same time, I don't blame Howard for that either. I suppose, <sighs> It's easy to misunderstand the relationship between them, right? Because as an audience member, I feel like I know them all intimately. So to me, they all seem like friends. So I suppose when I saw it at the end of last episode, it feels like they all know each other enough for that conversation. But actually, interesting. I suppose actually the reality of it is they're not close at all, especially not Jimmy and Howard. So for Howard to do that, yeah, she's got a point, you know. As much as I sympathise with uh, Howard and do think that Kim's being a little bit harsh here, I do, I do also think she's kind of justified, actually, the more that I think about it. I thought I owed it to Jimmy. Right. Did you owe it to Rebecca? You tell her your theory? Mm. That Chuck intentionally set himself on fire? It's heavy stuff, yeah. I guess not. No. I didn't do it to hurt Jimmy. No, you did it to make yourself feel better. True. I was trying to do. Feel better by unloading your guilt. Who cares what it does to Jimmy, right? As long as Howard Hamlin is okay. Kim, I, I don't think that's fair. Fair? Oh. Let's talk about fair. Go on. Then let's let him pick up a keepsake or two. That is so, so fair. And did I hear you right? You want him to serve on the board of a scholarship committee? A scholarship that Chuck never in a million years yeah. would have given to Jimmy. Yeah. It is just, I mean, oh, what's this too, huh, Howard? What? <sighs> One last screw you, little brother, from beyond the grave. Am I really supposed to do this to him? Do you know what, though? Can I just have a single moment to just... 
No, no, no. For, like, for real? Based as fuck. Beautiful. Oh, Kim's beautiful. I love Kim. I really do. Say what you want, right? And I think you can. You can sit there and you can say, it's a little harsh, Kim. But I think it's easy to say that because we as the audience know all the context. We know that impossible knowledge of where Howard's coming from. So it's like, I have empathy for him because I know that, but Kim doesn't know that, Jimmy doesn't know that, no one else has reason to know that. So that's where that comes from when I say, I feel like she's been a little harsh. But everything she just said is spot on, actually. And I love, actually, that considering we've had a whole show of Jimmy being beaten down, beaten down, beaten down, and Kim's coming to his defense in this huge way and actually shouting down Howard. I think that's so lovely. I love to see that. And actually, yeah, this stuff does warrant this kind of anger. Everything that we've seen, all of the egregiously, uh, emotionally manipulative stuff we've seen towards Jimmy that is shaping his life, man. This is deep. This changes a person, it does change him. We know, we know where he goes. When you think of who he was in Breaking Bad, that's not the Jimmy we started with in this show. He got there for a reason. And considering we know that journey, this anger from Kim is beautiful and so warranted. What can I do to make it better? Bless him. And Nothing. Right. There is nothing you can do. I can't stop that I do feel empathetic towards Howard because I do know where he was coming from and I do think it was genuine. <sighs> but she's right and, and I don't think he identifies that he was in his feelings, which is understandable. But if he'd taken a moment to think, is this the right time to give Jimmy this information? It wasn't. And I think it was motivated by his guilt. You've seen me talking about it last episode, this episode. She hit the nail on the head and I think he needed to hear that because there was selfishness motivating him. As much as I don't think it was insidious with its intent from his perspective, there was selfishness there motivating that he said that. What can I do to make it better? Nothing. And she's also right with that. That couch is good. If I remember correctly. Yeah, is she gonna give him it? Sorry, by the way, because I did say, I stand by what I said. I think right now, actually, if he reads it and it's kind, considering what he's going through, it would be a bad thing. I think in the long term, this is the thing though, I know where Jimmy goes. Do you know, because if I didn't know, if I didn't have that future reference, I think a kind letter actually could heal eventually. Even if it doesn't now, I think there's potential for it to heal how he feels, because that could be the last thing, the last interaction almost between him and Chuck. And if it's kind, that changes things. Do you know what I mean? Emotions right now, they're heated. It's heavy. But over time, perhaps, it could be, like I say, healing and closure. Maybe we get that. Maybe we get an ounce of that. With commercials, so. Yeah. Got a couple leads. Actually, I got an offer. Mm hmm This wasn't a perfect fit. Do you know what? Sorry. What I've just realized as well is that I feel like he can never become sore with Kim at his side. That's kind of what I'm getting the impression of this episode. That defense no, 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 it's not the right word. That protectiveness that I just saw from Kim. And, and you know, it's not new. We've seen that before. We've seen the love that she holds for him. The willingness to get so angry and to defend him so angrily, as she just did with Howard. Someone like that by his side, there for him, supporting him. I don't think he'd become Saul, so my brain goes something must split them for him to become that. It's a working theory, so we'll see as we go on. You know, or she dies, but shut up, stop, no. I, okay. Good, do it while you can, why not? Yeah, still very unclear about where he's going. Where is he ultimately going right now? Ah, the model, did he take it? It's a lot of money. Is he gonna take it? I'm not available at the moment, leave a message. He's gonna get Mike to take it. I can't remember if, if I've mentioned this before, actually. Uh, and I know I took a break, obviously, so I don't know if I might have said it and forgot about it, or whether this has just been a thought that I've had in my head and not said out loud. But um, I do feel like Chuck not being in the world anymore, I think Chuck being in the world was literally, you know, a check for Jimmy's morality. He was actively stopping Jimmy from misbehaving in some ways, right? And I think with Chuck not in the world anymore, acting that way, literally, but I think also figuratively, right? I think Chuck's presence did keep Jimmy in check a little bit, right? He, I think, I think maybe, and you know, this is me kind of assuming, but it would, I think it would have been natural for him to, as he was living his life, making decisions to a certain extent, being like, ah, Chuck would disapprove. And whether you like it or not, he respects Chuck on some level, on a deep level. As much as whatever else might be going on, I think he respects Chuck and he wants to please him. 
right that's the kind of the cruelty of the situation he wanted to please him and i think that inner voice of chuck was probably keeping him morally straight and i think chuck not being in the world anymore like i say literally not there to check him but also figuratively not being there perhaps figuratively in those decision making processes anymore in jimmy's head the absence of chuck perhaps now it's like a jimmy off off the hook on the loose and i think this perhaps is signifying that we're taking six tonight it's what the boss would want. You gonna back me up or what? Yeah. Kinda have to. Do you really wanna do this? It's the catalyst really, isn't it? The fact that Nacho pulled the gun and our boy here taking out this out of the bag. Obviously knows that he's, uh, at least, at least that he's got a secret. I feel like it's gonna be the catalyst for uh, approaching Nacho now. Yeah, Nacho's in deep. I like the brownie points that he got from this guy in backing him up here, but yeah, like I say, catalyst I think for Bad things for Nacho. That's how you do it. Hello, we're lingering. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The catalyst. Maybe already planned, but... Damn. Gus himself coming out. I know what you've done. Yeah. The Salamancas, they do not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You're in his pocket now, buddy. No getting out for Nacho. From now on, you are mine. Yeah, very interesting, isn't it, though? Because uh, that thing, isn't it, of the Nacho's not in Breaking Bad. And now that he's arrayed so close to Gus, we would have known him in Breaking Bad if he was still close to Gus. So what is what happens? Right, yeah, nice little tease from the show. Again, using the thing, using the idea that the audience has the knowledge from Breaking Bad and using that to tease. Power move, dude. Power move. Yeah, there we are. Well, I have waffled enough this episode. I think I'm pretty happy with the analysis I've done. Lots to talk about, lots to think about. Yeah, really only the thing left is to see where it goes. So beautiful writing, beautiful symmetry in the writing between Gus and Jimmy this episode that I think really demonstrates the situation that Jimmy's in and actually the, uh, the passion that goes into wanting to get closure, needing that. Really good episode. I loved this episode. I think it was really well done and paves the way for interesting things going forward. So yeah, I'll leave that there. But thank you so much for watching. Um, subscribe if you're not already. That was Breathe episode two. If you like my work, like to support a little bit further, uh, links in the description below. I've got YouTube memberships, Patreon, both of those platforms that exactly the same. You get some badges on YouTube uh, memberships. If you're interested, there's a Walter White one. Some people have got that already, which is really cool to see. Some novellas down there as well. Hey, consider watching this video to uh, help me out with the algorithm all the same. But uh, other than that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you genuinely to those that do support me. You uh, genuinely, genuinely, genuinely help out. So um, thank you. And um, other than that, I'll see you soon.